Okay, hi everyone. So today we're going to be talking about measuring time. So one of the most important things that you can do in a program, uh, in a lot of engineering applications, is to, uh, to, to measure time. And uh, it can have big effects on uh, what's going to go on with, with, your, um, with your program, so um, your application. So I'm going to do a time example. So we're going to call it, this is going to be my project, like this. Let's replace the window right here. Okay, and um, there we go. So we got a main routine right here, a main method. And so inside of here, uh, I'm going to, to just run a cycle of, of a task. It doesn't matter what the task is. I'm just going to show that it, it cycles a lot of times. And, uh, and I'm going to use a, a, a basic uh, method for, for measuring time in milliseconds that's available by default. Uh, in the in this sort of standard packages that that, that uh, Java comes with, so I'm going to do a, um, a a variable right here. I'm going to call it uh, uh, start time. So it's going to record the initial time at which we're going to sort of measure things from, and uh, it's going to be in it's from system, and uh, we're going to use IntelliJ is great this way. Um, it's right here actually. It's current time millis right there. Okay. And so we don't have to load out any other packages or anything like that, no other libraries. And uh, so that's the, the time value, all right? And uh, let me see, we're going to, oops, we're gonna say equals like that, yep. And uh, and now we're gonna do a little for loop. So we're gonna go for int, so it's gonna, and we're using a long integer because we want uh, a lot of space because the integer value can, can be a, a very big number. Okay, so we're going to go for int uh, i is equal to zero, i is uh, less than or equal to say a hundred thousand, one hundred like that, and then one two three like that, and we go i plus plus like so, and then in here we're just going to do sys sys out, out like that, and we're going to go and put a little period there, and then after the for loop is done, we're going to say done time elapsed is colon like that and then we're going to go plus and uh, then we're going to put another plus there and then we're going to say seconds like that it's always nice to have it's actually really important in engineering and science applications to have units attached to whatever you're displaying so right here we're going to put the value that is elapsed in milliseconds, divide that by a thousand. So what is that? Well, it's it's the value of time after the for loop. So assist, oh, come on, there we go. System dot current time in milliseconds, like that, minus start time. When I do that, notice that this stopped being grayed. Start time turned into a, into a black right there. Okay, so I've got my current time after the for loop, I subtract the initial time because it's a running counter of milliseconds. Okay. And, um, and then I'm going to say that it's divided by a thousand. Actually, you know what, R right before I'm going to go like this, I'm going to go S out like that. And I'm going to say current time in milliseconds. Okay, is like that. And we're going to go plus and we're going to go start time like that. And we're going to put that plus milliseconds like that. I think, I think we got it. All right, so you can see the whole code right there. Okay, um, let's go and compile that and make sure. building. That's a good sign. That's always a good sign that it hasn't stopped building. It builds, it builds, it builds. And then we'll run it. Almost done here. Good. So it uh, it built. Now let's try and run it. Let's see what happens at runtime. So there should be a window down here that'll have a bunch of periods displayed in it. 
and each time one of those periods is displayed, it takes a little bit of time. You do it 100,000 times and that takes up a few seconds, hopefully. And it's, we're just doing it to, to burn time, to burn cycles. Okay, so it's still building. And then we'll see the display appear down here. I think we're almost done. There we go. So a bunch of periods. Oh, I did a print line here. This should have been a print without the line like that. Oh, we'll know for next time. Okay. Anyway, it says the elapsed time is one second. Okay, well, that didn't take very long. So let's uh, let's uh, make that longer. Okay. So we'll, uh, we'll add one more zero right there. Let's run it and see what happens. And I took out the print line. I made it a print. So it should uh, it should just fill up the whole there we go like that and it should it's taking a lot more than one second this time that's a good thing hopefully in the neighborhood of nine to ten seconds oh is it done let's scroll back over here oh it did finish but did it print out <laughs> there it is okay there there's my there's my display okay so nine seconds um okay so i should have put a slash n right there um okay so that that worked okay so now let's try it as a standalone program so i'm going to go nano and we're going to call this um let me see measure time dot java like that oops i already had a program Call that let's just uh, paste it in like so I've got to change the name of the class to be measure time like that I could have done that in a separate text editor as well but it'll be fine Java C measure time dot Java like that actually see it there's the file right there okay in the editor uh, and then we go Java oops measure time like that there's your dots okay it says in this case it took four seconds it actually take, it takes less time in the terminal window right there now if you look right here, just as I was executing, it said current time in milliseconds is this. This is a very big number. This is a running time value um, that shows the number of milliseconds that uh, that basically exist on the machine in this particular state. And then what we do is we take the next time this is measured and we subtract this number from that number and it gives us the difference in milliseconds. And so in our program, what we then did is we divided by a thousand to convert the milliseconds into seconds. So this is a quick and dirty way of showing how to uh, record the current time, run something, and then output the elapsed time to be able to know how much time it took. So in this case, we saw that it took four seconds or so to run this loop in uh, the Java shell. It took about nine seconds in IntelliJ. What's important to point out is that there is nothing inherent uh, in terms of time in this for loop. It can take less time, it can take more time depending on the software you're using, depending on the hardware you're using. And so the next thing we have to do after this in order to, to properly regulate time on a, in a program or in an engineering or science application is uh, to use a, a different way of examining time that is uh, less fickle, okay, if we want to put it a particular way. All right. Take care, everyone. Stay healthy.